What's going on guys? Welcome back to the DX Gamer Show. My name is Mike, aka Operation DX, and welcome to episode 21, where things are starting to slow down a little bit at the launch center. We just finished a big mission to Eve and Gilly and got ourselves a decent amount of science. So in the first part of this episode, in standard fashion, I'm going to spend a little bit of that science. So the first thing I'm going to unlock is the LVN engine. So probably we'll be using that in the future. And another thing I really wanted, as I expressed in the previous episode, is the docking port senior. So I had to unlock composites. And then to get to that, I had to get uh, over here to uh, metamaterials. And that will give me the docking port senior, along with some really cool things that I can connect engines to, which is uh, very helpful for future builds and stuff, because I have some ideas. And then I'm gonna go ahead and unlock the top tier experimental science package that is going to give me that scanner that will allow me to zone in on those resources and the big 1500 ore tank. I'm also going to go ahead and grab the grappler so I can possibly do some future missions to grab some asteroids. I don't know if I'm going to do that. Right now I'm more interested in setting up my interplanetary fuel network. Uh, I don't know how far I'm going to go with that, but uh, that's pretty much what I'm going to do. Now, I'm just kind of grabbing a couple of things that I didn't grab way back. So here is the beginning of the probe stuff here. And then I'm going to go ahead and unlock some aerodynamics. I totally haven't even been using the procedural fairing thing. Um, haven't seen it to be very necessary, though, with the current designs that I've been building. So... Not too big of a deal there. I haven't run into too much trouble, honestly, with my rocket designs. Maybe that helps rockets not flip over, but again, I haven't had too much trouble with that. So, the first thing we are going to do in this episode is something that uh, I expressed in the past couple of episodes. We are going to re relocate our scanning satellite for resources. So, we are sitting here above the moon, and we're going to transfer this over to Minmus and then scan Minmus. And then after we're gonna go ahead and move our mining rig over there. And this was something that was suggested in the comments. It is a extremely good idea. And again, in my haste, I had just n didn't put any thought into it. I just thought, oh, well, well, the moon would be a great place to lift off and, and send interplanetary missions. But actually it's probably better to do it Minmus. So. I'm going to start really kind of crunching down in the Minmus area, probably during the next couple of episodes, going to start setting up uh, a space station for like refueling and probably redesigning and changing my uh, spacecraft philosophy so that uh, they can be refueled and all of that. Now I'm also probably going to have to have refueling locations uh, along the way, possibly at Duna. Maybe I can launch my jewel mission from Duna. I don't know. Just a couple of ideas. I don't quite know how I'm gonna do that. Here, um, I'm kind of doing, uh, like I didn't know the precision <laughs> approach here because I am in a uh, equatorial orbit around the moon. So I just decided to be a little lazy and just burn out as far as I could until I got a relatively close capture to Minmus. And the benefit of this is you almost always end up in a polar orbit, which is exactly what this satellite needs. But uh, I'm essentially probably going to do the same thing with my mining rig. So I'll, I'll end up in a polar orbit, have to do a plane change. Or, unless there's resources on the poles, I might not have to. We'll, have to, we'll just have to see what happens. And of course, this is going to dictate the positioning of the future uh, space station. So hopefully it is actually equatorial because I'd hate to have to do plane changes every time I send out an interplanetary mission. So here we do. Here we go, doing the scan. And I can't remember quite what this does. It just says you've completed the scan. Yeah. So that is done. All right, so let's see where those juicy, juicy resources are on Minmus. Now, I don't know if this is random, like every time. I don't know if there's like, I assume it is. I assume like, like if you were to do this in your game, it would be different than it is in my game. Oh, that could not be a better spot. Honestly, 
that is the best spot that resources could possibly be on this moon. Honestly, there couldn't be a better spot. It's a flat surface. Yeah, that's that's absolutely perfect. So fantastic. Relatively equatorial, slight differential in the plane. Not a big deal. So yeah, I've got a lot of debris floating around Kerbin and different locations. So I have to uncheck that every time uh, I look for my craft. So technically, I don't have a ton of craft floating around the Kerbin system, but uh, it's becoming hard to find because some of the craft I'm leaving a bunch of debris behind. So something I might have to be mindful. I might have to do a cleanup mission later. <laughs> I hope I don't launch like a mission and actually run into some of this debris and damage my craft. That would suck really, really bad. All right, so shutting down my drills on my miner. I'm going to go ahead and lock the struts on the slanted side of this slope because when I noticed that when I planted the drills, the drills shifted the craft around. And again, this thing is on a slope, so it could potentially tip over, and that would be an absolute disaster. This thing weighs a, uh, a crap ton. It weighs 43 tons, and there would be no way to rescue this craft if it til tilted over. <laughs> so uh, I definitely don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go ahead, and here's the big moment, retracting the drills on the slanted side, and this really, really makes me nervous. This makes me nervous, nervous. Okay, so locking those struts was probably a good idea because probably what would have happened is uh, as this thing kind of leaned down on the slope, as one of the drills came up and the other drill came up, it probably would have tilted over and it would have been a freaking mess, most likely. That is my um, theory anyways. Okay, so again, this thing is an absolute beast and I have to throttle hard. Essentially, this thing has a full load of ore, which is good. And uh, it's probably going to take every bit of fuel to get into the orbit of the moon. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the ore to refuel the craft. And then I will send it off to Mimis. So here I'm just turning off my fuel cells. Sorry, it's kind of dark, but I do have lights on this craft. So you can kind of see what's going on here. But we'll be in map mode for most of the time here now. So as you can see, I'm, I'm just I'm cooking through the fuel. Just cooking through it. I mean, theoretically, what I could have probably done is disable those lv 909s but i think i need that extra oomph to get this thing moving so it's probably best to leave that on and yeah see that uh, quarter tank left and i'm pretty much almost in orbit of the moon but this is this is exactly why moving this over to minmus was a really fantastic suggestion because I don't think it will be quite this bad. I mean, it will cook off a, a a little bit of fuel. I mean, it'll probably be a decent amount, but it will be nowhere near what I'm cooking off here. So anyways, I have to go ahead and uh, redeploy my sol solar panels, turn back on my ISR unit. I actually uh, left it on when I was launching, which was bad. It was uh, draining the battery. That could have been disastrous because I could have run out of power. But I think I could start those fuel cells without power i don't know maybe i haven't run out of power in uh, a craft with fuel cells so i don't quite know uh, i would assume you'd be able to turn it on all right same deal here um just trying to figure out okay this isn't quite working out how the other one did but uh, i know i know that i'll be able to find a capture some here somewhere around here uh i'm thinking yeah what's happening here actually is because we're on a um higher plane uh, there could be an issue. But just in case, I moved it into a relatively similar position that the satellite was in. And I figured, uh, see, there. Now I'm getting close approach. Now it's just a matter of zoning in. And here I'm figuring out that it uh, it's a plane issue that's really causing it. That's why it's a good idea to actually target the body. So you can get those indicators and kind of see, oh, hey, um, my distance is kind of far because of the plane issue. So... Yeah, it's, it's good. Like, it's good that these helpers are in the game because they help a freaking ton. All right, so just burning out. Obviously, I don't have a capture here, so I'm going to do a correction. Like, standard operating procedure for me, pretty much. I do a lot of these, like, small corrections. And uh, here, I'm just kind of zoning in with uh, the, maneuver <laughs> the maneuver node. And I should be able to find it somewhere. There it is. All right, so I don't 
quite know where that is on Minmus. It looks like it's in a um, retrograde orbit, which is not a big deal because uh, I'm going to go ahead and just land this thing down anyways. I also think that the station around Minmus right now is in a retrograde orbit. I can't remember, but I don't really care about that station, so... I think what I'm probably going to do is, it, it's really low on fuel, so what I'll probably do is dock my my mining rig to it, fill it back up, send it back to curb, and uh, I don't think it can, uh, I don't think it can survive re-entry. I don't think it's designed to do a re-entry on curb, so I don't know. Maybe I'll just kind of leave it there as a relic, or maybe just put it in a really high orbit. Not sure. Not sure what I'm going to do with that thing, because... I'm totally going to redesign the space station. It needs some critical things that uh, I want to do. I want to have like this little craft for a Kerbal that can go down to the surface and come back up um, and set down flags and stuff just to uh, mark the biomes and stuff because I, I know there's more science here to be had and then I can unlock some of those um, Aerodynamic aircraft parts probably with that. There's probably a few more biomes here on here that I can I can do that with anyways So here I'm uh, just setting up and uh, I got a little overzealous with my burn there So I had to flip the craft back around and do that quite often. I used to do that a lot in the point two two series <laughs> Actually, there was a comment recently on the point two two series and in my first episode I hadn't realized like I totally crashed my first craft and uh, it was kind of funny um, I don't know, just a funny moment uh, You know sometimes you just get comments on like older videos and they're like, oh, what is he talking about? And it's like watch it or whatever. It's like, oh, that was <laughs> That was interesting. <laughs> I can't believe I let that one slide But you know, that's still relatively um, it's not it's not early days. I've been playing Kerbal Space Program for <laughs> forever. All right, so yeah, dude, look how freaking fantastic this place is for this setup here. The ore is right below me and a, the flattest surface on Minmus. This could not have gone any freaking better. Now, I don't think I'm going to change up the design of my minor too much. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to like do a redesign now that I've got those bigger tanks. That could be something I could consider, but I think this is going to be sufficient. I mean, I'm probably going to have to do a different design for other planets, but for the local system, this thing is more than sufficient. More than more than sufficient. I want to I want to unlock those uh, more advanced probe cores that allow you to fly kind of like there's a pilot inside of the craft where you can you know lock in the prograde retrograde and all that i really like that you can do that when you have a pilot on board and this one you have to do it all manually uh old school which isn't a problem but uh, i kind of like having the ability to do that anyways i want to put this thing down nice and gently my massive massive mining craft i'm gonna go ahead and just uh, get this thing running again just for now Oh yeah, I gotta do my scan. So this scans the biome, Minmus Great Flats. So that is where we are. Um, I'd like to get a Kerbal down here and uh, just mark that off with a flag, but uh, I will need to, that'll happen when I get my station. Um, so I'm probably gonna have some Kerbals manning it. And we'll probably finally getting the, be getting that mobile processing unit up in the orbit, which is, Something that uh, I've been wanting to do, but like I said in the Eve mission, it's starting to become less relevant because we're really kind of trekking down the science tree now. Like the tech tree, you've unlocked a lot of stuff. So let me go ahead and turn my drills on, get this thing going back the way it was. Then we'll essentially just leave it. It'll probably be all filled up by the time we need it again, which is exactly what we want. Didn't spend too much ore transmitting the fuel which is uh, kind of surprising i expected it to be less efficient than it actually is but it is uh, not too bad not too bad considering and i probably should build a station maybe with an isr unit on it with a big old giant drum that can hold some ore and then i could just save just a little bit left and then keep bringing this thing up and down and up and down but i gotta mark the landing site and i've got to get that scanner down to find the most efficient area 
That way I can mine a little more efficiently. But yeah, this uh, this little mission went successful. A couple missions there, relocating the satellite and placing down the miner. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching.